Hello, Pastor Steve Waldron. Glad you are here with us. And we're studying a journey through the book of Matthew, the very first gospel, the tax collector, also known as Levi. You'll notice it has a lot to do with numbers in here, just as Luke has a lot to do with medicine. God uses them for inspiration in those areas. Anyhow, we're in Luke, I mean, excuse me, Matthew chapter 8. And this is our 18th lesson. 18th lesson. So be sure to listen to the other 17 if you can. Try to keep them around 10 minutes, something like that. And let's just go verse by verse. Let's get started. So we're in Matthew chapter 8, beginning at verse 21. Glad you're here with us. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. So this is the cost of discipleship, like Bonhoeffer wrote about. But Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. The spiritually dead, let them bury their dead. He's the resurrection and the life. Follow me. He, he told in Luke, if you don't love him more than we love our families, we can't be saved. So verse 23, there's a little flag there. It means it's another paragraph. If you got a King James Bible, many King James, I don't know that it's in all of them. Verse 23, and when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. That's what the term disciple means, is to follow closely, basically. And so he's in the Sea of Galilee, this little seven mile by 14 mile, really big lake. Been there, hung out on, on it. It's wonderful, sang Christian songs on it. Very peaceful, very gorgeous. Still not very built up. So much of Jesus' ministry was there. You can see where the Sermon on the Mount was. The Gadarean pigs where they would run into the, the, the sea and where the storms would be. We're about to be at just beautiful, beautiful. It's very near the Syrian border. It's near the northernmost part. It's, reason it's called Galilee of the Gentiles because it's that melting pot area. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, and that just happens on the Sea of Galilee. Insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. G.A. Hinty writes some wonderful historical novels. I'm thinking of one he wrote about a young man on the Sea of Galilee being raised. So the ship was covered with the waves. But Jesus was asleep. Why? Jesus knew he was going to fulfill his mission. When you've got Jesus, you can have peace in the midst of your storm. And the disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. Now, some of these guys are fishermen. You know, James, John, Peter, these are fishermen. And they're like, you know, help. <laughs> and he saith unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Now, one of the things you might want to study sometimes in Scripture is, is how Jesus answered people. He just never answered like the way almost that you'd think he's going to answer. Maybe sometimes, but so often, you know, there's waves coming over the ship. You know, they've got that famous Galilee boat that they found in archaeology. And he's like, why are you worried? <laughs> you got God, the creator of the, the sea is in the boat with you. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So all he said, shut up, basically. And there was a great calm. Some people say that's what it is in the Greek. Verse 27, but the men marveled, saying, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? It is fascinating. He cast out devils. He could heal hundreds of people. They had seen all that. Send his word and heal people as earlier in chapter 8. Touch lepers, cleanse them. Peter's mother-in-law healed earlier in chapter 8. And here, they're saying, but man, he can do all the devil's sickness, cleansing, but the winds and the sea. I mean, hey, we serve a big God. He'll take care of you too. Verse 28, another flag means it's going to a different subject. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs. Now, it was a real debate whether when I did this study, should I do a harmony of the Gospels or do it Gospel by Gospel? I decided to do it Gospel by Gospel. One thing I do appreciate about Finus Dake and Dake's study Bible is he did notice that certain things that people think are the same thing are really 
two different instances in the life of Jesus. And this would possibly be one of those instances. So, two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, not just fierce, but exceeding fierce, that no man might pass by that way. Could you imagine these two demon-possessed people? Ah! And nobody could go anywhere close. Verse 29, And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Notice, he had been the one. He saw Satan cast out like lightning. He's the one that kicked him out of heaven. Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? These devils, think about that. The devils know they're going to be tormented. I just think that's so neat. The devils know there is one God. And what do they do? They tremble. If you ever want to get devils trembling, say the name of Jesus, the one true and living God. All right, verse 30. And there was a good way off from them and heard of many swine feeding. So, you know, technically, if this was indeed uh, Israel's territory, hey, that's forbidden uh, food. You know, Jews aren't supposed to eat ham. Remember one time went to a Jewish delicatessen and somebody that was with me accidentally asked for a ham sandwich. They weren't trying to be rude. They just didn't realize we were in a Jewish delicatessen. Didn't register. And so, but there was, but it could have been since it's Galilee of the Gentiles, maybe there was Gentile, who knows. And uh, heard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him saying, if thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the unclean animals. They heard of swine, hey, the unclean, what God calls clean is going to be pure. Even the type of music, David could play just a certain type of music and devils would go away from Saul. Be careful the type of music you listen to. And so the devils pray. I find it interesting the devils have more faith sometimes than humans. They pray. Verse 32, and he said unto them, go. Now notice, all it took to cast out the devils out of these two exceeding fierce guys is go. Oh, that's Jesus. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. So what happened? They were a peaceful herd of swine, all being nice. No, behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. They jumped off the mat in the mosh pit and drowned in the waters. I guess pigs can't swim. I have no idea. I haven't seen the YouTube video on that. But just jumped out of the water into the Sea of Galilee and, and drown. And so that's what happens a lot of times. Demons, you know, influence people. They get all kind of the mob stuff. Verse 33, And they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything. And what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. So you would think, okay, these two people that kept the herd of swine, they go into the city and say, look at what happened. Now, verse 34, this is one of the most unique, 834, one of the most unique passages in all of Scripture. It says, and behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, like John 4, the Samaritans. They wanted to hear, oh, but wait. And when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coast. Could you imagine, because demons were cast out, unclean animals were taken away, they said, we don't want you. See, and we're used to Acts 8 revival in Samaria, and Acts 19 revival in Ephesus. Sometimes you start doing the work of God, people are like, we like the devils. Whoa. Unbelievable. And they come to steal, kill, and destroy. Let's go to one verse in chapter 9, and we'll be through for this lesson. He entered into a ship and passed over. I love whenever it's talking about going over water, so often the King James translators and the original Hebrew and Greek would say passed over, indicating the Passover, the Passover lamb. What is that? That's amazing. And came into his own city. Jesus went into his own city. Just went back over to cast out two devils and be rejected. Got back into the ship, went into his own city. So God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us today. I encourage you to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We love you. God bless you. May God's richest blessings be upon you. Hit subscribe. Put it on social media. Hit the bell notification. God bless in Jesus' name.